gentleman yields back. I now recognize the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Ivey, for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me pick up where you just left off, Mr. Peterson. Uh, my district is Prince George's County, sort of the inner part. I'm between D.C. and Steny Hoyer. And it goes all the way up to, I call it the Research Triangle area, where we have the University of Maryland, we've got NASA at one corner, we've got the Agriculture Research Center, we've got NOAA there, and just a few miles up uh, from that triangle area, there's NSA Fort Meade and FDA. Um, Naval Academy also is huge on cyber. So, uh, you know, the regional grants piece that you just mentioned, I was wondering if that's something that is available in, in my immediate area, and if so, tell me, tell me about it. Yeah, so as I said, we recently funded 18. We're in the process of merit reviewing applications for 15 additional awards, and this is money appropriated by Congress that may be available for additional grants in the future. So that is absolutely one opportunity that could be available to your constituents. All right, and this would be a, a, an application piece that's gonna be coming in the near future? Yeah, a notice of funding opportunity that would be publicly announced. What's the timeline roughly for when the next 15 are gonna be coming available? Well, the, the current 15, the deadline uh, occurred in May. So we're currently reviewing and we'll award those later this summer or early fall. The, whether there's future awards is dependent on appropriations. All right, uh, Mr. Mo, I wanted to follow up with you. I think Mr. Magaziner asked you about teaching um, what cyber skills are being taught, and you mentioned that they are, you want to make sure that they're available. And I'm looking at sort of the, I was going to say K through 12, but it's probably more, list, more realistically middle school and high school. What specific cyber skills are we talking about that public schools should be making available, say, at the high school level? What, what we are pushing, thank you so much for the question, what we are pushing in the strategy is the idea of the foundational cyber skills. So it's not a skill on a, on a particular technology. It's about a skill in which uh, you know how to use technology. You can port your skills from one technology to another. It's about things like pattern recognition, um, uh, understanding abstraction, uh, as well as problem solving. The reason why we're pushing for those foundational skills in K-12 and middle school um, is because once you have those skills, you can use those skills to learn other technical skills. Right, So I've seen school districts that actually um, go the route of certifications. I've seen school districts that go the route of hands-on learning on uh, some of those uh, uh, curriculum that we have online. Um, but for us to be able to future-proof our workforce and make sure that we build a dynamic workforce, they can use any sort of technology in the future, we need to push foundational cyber skills. All right, so those would be coming through just to really try and narrow this down math and science classes that are offered well, and, and career ten, yeah math science there are like career technical education curriculum sometimes depending on the pathways of the schools locally um so those are where those uh, skills are generally taught okay and are there particular programs that are available maybe not in my district but in it's anywhere in the country where they actually are they were put together with this in mind to prepare students to be able to go into this line of work and develop these specific skills? Um, right now, a lot of those are uh, done through, uh, like, you know, CTE CyberNet has a way to kind of teach some of those cyber skills, and they, uh, by the time they get to the student, it's about, like, problem solving with technology. And the CTE, example. is that available at the high school level, or is that the... the uh, middle school and high school level. Middle school, okay. Then I did have a question about uh, the contractors piece, because I think somebody said there's 60,000 contractors. Is that what you, Ms. Beavers? Yes, Congressman. Okay, so I'm looking at a document here that's put out by the, the uh, state of Maryland that says that um, cybersecurity and information security jobs do not yet have a defined standard industrial classification number. Um, and I wanted to know if that is the case for the federal government or not. So the Department of Defense has been on this journey for nearly 15 years now to actually categorize and classify. I got 40 seconds. So uh, I will have to take that for the record. Uh, I think okay. that is let our me, best let me, estimate. Let me tell you why I'm asking. Uh, in part because I want to make sure that from a contracting standpoint, uh, we want diversity about students and the like who are, get a chance to, to uh, obtain these skills. I also want to make sure there's diversity with the opportunity to get the contracts. And so if you have the codes in place, that's one of the ways that the government monitors uh, and can track 
um, how the uh, contracts are being made available and whether they're being done in a diverse way or not. Uh, so if, if you can get back to me, if you could give me a written response on that, and if you could give me a general sense too of, and you're, you're with DOD? What DOD, she nodded for the record. Uh, what, yes, Congressman. <laughs> flashback to trial. Uh, <laughs> if you can give me a, a sense too of what the Department of Defense is doing to make sure that it's doing, making outreach efforts to make sure that there are diverse opportunities for contractors and that there's a diverse field of contractors uh, that are providing the work for the federal government. And thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back. I now recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. D'Esposito, for five minutes of questioning. Well, thank